Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we've got a team that's been great at defending the pass. The Dolphins are top 10 at defending the pass, and they'll be going up against the Browns, who will need to solve that secondary. With that, we'll send it over to Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. They've got the call in this week five matchup. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to rain-soaked Miami, Florida. Today, we've got a good Week 5 matchup in store here between the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. Hi, everyone. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis. Charles, you look at the Dolphins as they enter play in this one. The losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they come in with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year, but when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. This is taken at the three. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. Shift together here from the D-line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. And a lot of the weight of this offense falls on the shoulders of the running back. That's because the offense knows if they give him any openings, any opportunities, he can turn it into a big play at any time. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. A little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Finding time. Looking left side, and it's complete. So a little grabbing there, but this time it goes against the offense for holding. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. So on fourth down, here's Matt Darr to kick it away. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. And he'll give it here to his running back. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was at the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. Seven yards to go on second down. Here we go. And they'll run it here. Fights forward for only about a yard up to the 21. A couple of Dolphins in on the stop. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, 
those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because they're usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. It goes as a gain of nine, and it moves the chains. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Snap as they'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. He'll find his man on the comeback route. Complete. Give him 18 on that one. And the Browns are going to have a first down. Love the call by the offensive coordinator, recognizing the situation very well, calling for the play-action pass and completing it. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Holding offense. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook before the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And just like that, it's third down. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. A play action fake. They'll look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. So here on fourth down, the Browns turn to Travis Coons in the field goal unit. It's a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. So, of course, they wanted to find the end zone, but when you go on the road and your first drive results in... set to take the field here as they have the football in the final minute of this first quarter. They'll give it to him right up the gun. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. Cut a big seam, and he might go all the way. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great play there. 77 yards. And the Browns were able to strike quickly for six. Charles, they had six DBs out there. They were thinking pass. They surprised him with a long run. I wonder if they saw that and just checked to it. Maybe had an audible and said, you know something? Against six defensive backs, let's run the football. Let's get our big guys downfield and match up with the littler guy.
you into the start of this next possession. The score, 7 0. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got a man and he hits him in stride. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys on the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game. And while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big-bodied receiver with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well... offense will take over and they will have the football at their own 20 yard line they'll give it to him right up the gun sheds a second man he's building up some momentum isn't he 10 yards on the pick up there and it'll give the browns a first down really good skillful tough running throughout this contest picked up first down after first down he's got to have a nickname doesn't he how about the human first down machine? I think that fits. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he's got his man on the out route. A gain of six there on first. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Miami after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. He'll drop to throw. Looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. They go play action here on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure it out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to Matt. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be marked down deep into Miami territory. A big play that time for Cleveland. 41 yards. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. 
Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Showed it right there. They come out here in the eye. Back to throw here. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big tight end. His first touchdown on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late-in-the-half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones... Drop you into the start of this next possession. The score, 7 nothing. Now a play fake here on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Play action. They'll throw. Surveying the field. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Good job by the O-line. Quarterback had time to go through his checks. That's one you need to take advantage of. A perfect situation, and they're unable to take advantage of it. When you have that much time to scan the field, you have to find an open receiver. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's in for the touchdown. Half. The player is answered. How did they get that done? And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? Offense ready to get back out there as they'll have the football to start the third quarter. All right, now, lucky 56. Lucky 56. Hurry up, here we go. Blue landed. Blue landed. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. Another good run there, and now we're seeing an offense that's imposed its will on a defense. When we talk about that all the time, what does it really mean? It means that the guys on the offensive line, they feel like they can do whatever they want. They're in the huddle saying, run it again. Give us another chance to smack someone and create some space. On the defensive side of the ball, not only have they imposed their will against you, you're almost powerless to figure out what you're doing there, but you've got to keep your spirit up at the same time, and they're taking that too. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. But well, that's the desired outcome coming out here in the second half of being able to run the football and establish a little bit of pace and maybe even a bit of dominance at the line of scrimmage. And they want that to continue. Way too early to think about this being ball control time. But the way they're running it, you got to think. They may want to continue that and see if they can go ahead and grind their opponents into submission. This will be caught at about the three. He got 29 yards that time. 
Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. From the two-yard line now, it's, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. A great effort there with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Browns are pouring it on. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Five yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Now let's go. And they'll go on the ground. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run. They were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Yeah, let me pump out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. They'll set up to throw. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. And they brought in an extra defensive back here, so probably not expecting a run on third and three. A good call. And he will find his man on the outside. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Credited with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> the pickup of 11, and it moves the chains. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power. 
and you find a way to pick up first downs. They'll run the option left. And he showcased the spin, but couldn't do much else as he's wrangled down. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. I do know that owners, when they watch their quarterbacks running with the football, they usually hold their breath because that's the franchise. But when you're getting that kind of a gain, hard to argue against calling it. They'll give it to him right up the gun. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. It's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. switch it up here and look to throw and his throw is going to be incomplete not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude but i think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback and he's obviously a great franchise quarterback but felt the pressure threw it incomplete Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. This offense will get another shot at it as they'll quickly head back onto the field. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That's a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in order, he's got to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Hey, a lot of points have been scored in this game, but what a nice play by the defense. Stepping up on that one, maybe they'll get things going in their direction after a play like that. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So for the Browns, that early momentum continues here as they move to 4-0. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to New England to take on the Patriots. Meanwhile, for Miami, they'll fall to 1-4 with a loss. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to L.A. to take on the Rams. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports.